All right. Well, Jeff, I'm going to turn it over to you and let you get this for a start. Hey, th thank you very much, Nicole. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, looking forward to the, the next uh, 40, 45 minutes or so, or if we get lots of questions, it, it, it'll go a little longer, but uh, going to talk about highway design projects. Um, and then uh, moved into the director role of highway design. And, and in that role, I was more of a program manager. We're not really going to talk about program management today, more, more focused on project management. And uh, uh, after I retired and when I came to the center, I started being over research projects again. So that's very similar to uh, project management as well. But um, I want to get a feel for the audience here. So I've, I've got a couple of questions and, and throughout our presentation, I will be asking you to answer uh, some multiple choice questions. Yeah, we'll go ahead and launch that. And it's just a simple yes or no. Are you a project manager? And we'll give you some time here to answer that. A little more than half or 60% of you. So about 70, a little bit over 70%. You got a question in the chat. What is the difference between project management and the program management? Okay, we'll answer that right after this <laughs> poll. Thank you, Nicole. Um, let's go ahead and close that poll. I'm going to assume that, that, the, that the folks uh, that answered here, uh, there won't be, I know some of you are sharing the screen, so there won't be uh, mm -hmm. 100 percent total coverage, but it looks like uh, about a about 27 percent was what we're seeing our project managers and, and 73 percent or not um i wonder and uh let me press pause on the discussion if if you know where the different uh, emoji icons are for like the thumbs up or the clap or clap sign or the check or the x um, get those ready because i like to ask questions and just get some feedback from you um, and I want to say for those of you who answered no on being a project manager, how many of you would aspire to be project managers? And if, if you do aspire, give me the green check or the thumbs up sign and let's see how many of you are out there. Let's see. All right. Very good. So we're seeing, seeing some folks in here that, that want to, to move into project management. All right. I'm going to answer the next, uh, ask the next question, Nicole, and then I'm going to come back to project management and program management. So let's go for those of you who have been in project management. Uh, give me a range uh, of time that that you have served as a project manager. We got most folks so far are zero to five years. Um, okay. Some folks are answering the 10 to 20 years. That's where that's where I am. If you count my time at the highway department and my time at the center, I'm in and about uh, 15 years of uh, of project management. So let's go ahead and close that and let's go to my first slide here and Project managers are so important. Uh, there's there's a reason that they're in such demand. It is a very challenging, difficult job. And uh, it just takes an incredible amount of energy. In fact, I know uh, some of the best project managers I've known, when they uh, get on a larger project, they can, they can really burn out. They can burn out quickly. So we, you, you asked uh, in the chat, what's the difference between a project management and program management? We're going to define projects in the next several slides. So let me just skip over that and, and say we'll define project and project management here later. Program management, a program is a grouping of projects that you put together uh, for, for 
uh, ease of management or or some synergy uh, an example of program management and I, I give a lot of examples in the highway industry I know not everybody on on this may be in the highway industry some are some aren't but uh, in highway industry one of the things we would bundle would be resurfacing projects that's a very specific type of project to put down uh, either either concrete or asphalt resurfacing and uh, you put that together really to manage the money. There's so much money that, that different states or different counties will put down in resurfacing. So they are managing the budget. And so they'll have how much X number of dollars to spend on resurfacing. So they'll carve out projects under that program. So as director, um, there were a few programs under, under uh, the division of highway design where I was and we uh, tracked the projects as a grouping. So that hopefully that helps you with the difference between project um, um, and programs. I see another question here, um, difference between project management and a project lead. That's, that's an interesting question. I do, uh, feel strongly that management and leadership are are different but they are are tied as well and uh, uh, very closely uh, and in fact i think the best project managers are good leaders and we're going to get into that as well as far as leadership so if i don't answer your uh, question about the difference between project management project lead uh, remind me okay so let's get on here uh, first I want to acknowledge where uh, quite a bit of the material that I'm using comes from there is a group known as the Project Management Institute PMI uh, they were actually created by the uh, Georgia Institute uh, of Technology over 50 years ago and now it's worldwide it's a it's a it's a nonprofit, but it's it's a billion dollar industry. Um, the Project Management Institute has several accreditations and uh, not so much the, the Commonwealth of Kentucky, but definitely uh, the, the United States, uh, many federal projects require uh, some certifications that come from the Project Management Institute. One of the most uh, uh, well known accreditations is called the project management professional the PMP uh, anybody out there have their PMP give me a thumbs up if you do okay not seeing any of those um, so the uh, project management institute actually publishes a document known as the project management body of knowledge or for short, we call it PMBOC. Um, this, this document is recognized all over the world. Um, it, it does kind of give us a standard to point to for project management. Um, it gives advice and guidance and best practice in it. And uh, it does promote a common vocabulary, which is uh, it's amazing how uh, important that is that when I say project, we mean the same thing. Uh, anybody heard of the PMBOK? Give me a thumbs up if you have. Okay, got a few. Uh, if you aspire to project management, uh, I highly recommend the PMBOK. Um, there are some versions out there on the web, some older versions. If you want the newer version, you'll have to, to, to uh, spring for it and buy it. But uh, I, I came along the PM Bach about seven, eight years ago, and I had already been doing project management. I wished I'd have had it early on in my career. I think I would have, <laughs> uh, you, you, sometimes you, you learn your best lessons by making mistakes, but, but I would prefer to, to go study something almost academically before I put it into practice. Uh, and, and miss out on those mistakes. But uh, PMBOK is a very good, uh, a very good 
guidance document. James Young said it was a very comprehensive manual. Yes, thank you, James. It is very good. Okay, so let's try to answer uh, this question. So what is a project? So let's launch that poll. Do we got this question to launch? There it is. Okay, so is the answer a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique uh, product, service, or result? Is it is a project the time to relax while somebody else is doing the work? Is it random activities that are haphazardly put together with little aim or objective, or is it I have no idea? Uh, <laughs> So I like somebody answering that it's random activities, but obviously uh, the poll questions that I'm going to do ha are an attempt at a little bit of humor, but also the humor uh, is supposed to inform us as well. If, if you are a project manager that is doing things haphazardly, uh, you probably are, are going to really struggle. So by the PM Bach, the project, thank you for closing that, leave that up for just a minute. The, a project is a temporary endeavor. Um, and so when, when you get into the PMBOK, it actually talks about uh, maintenance operation things as ongoing, uh, but you can break down maintenance operation into uh, small projects. For example, the, uh, uh, getting the oil changed in your car, uh, your your spouse may say, hey, do you, what are you doing today? Well, I've got a small project. I'm going to change the oil in our car. But, but that is, that is a, a small project. It is temporary, but you're going to do it again. So that, that may be considered an operational maintenance activity as well. But one of the things that I really like about this definition is the word temporary, uh, temporary endeavor. Um, when I was at the highway department uh, and my wife and I were engaged, uh, I, I got a project. I started working on it as, as the design engineer and then switched to the project manager kind of midstream uh, as that project was, was moving forward. So when my wife and I were engaged, I said, hey, I got a new project that I'm starting to work on. And then at our 10th year anniversary, that project went to letting, meaning that it left the design phase at the highway department and went to construction. So I went to my wife and I said, hey, that, that project's going to letting. She's like, it, this is going to be like losing a family member. You've been working on that for 10 years. Uh, so the word temporary, yes, that was a project. It definitely had a, a unique product. We created construction documents that we put through a letting that another group built. Um, and it was temporary. It only took us 10 years to do. Uh, some, some projects, the uh, uh, temporary may be in the eye of the beholder, right? So let's uh, talk about the next question. How do you define a successful project? Is it a, a project where you get no blame for the things that have gone wrong? Uh, is it one that helps you keep your job and, and receive a regular paycheck? Uh, is a successful project one that achieves quality through a defined scope on time and within budget? Uh, or is it D, if at first you don't su succeed, then don't try skydiving. You definitely don't want to skydive if you're not going to succeed. But yeah, let's go ahead and close that. And I'm going to go to the next slide because one of the crux of my presentation today is about project success. Uh, Jeff, someone wants to know the name of the book again. It's called The uh, Project Management Body of Knowledge. Or if you type in Google P M B O K, P M B O K, uh, yeah, Brittany uh, sent it out and James sent out the letters. So if you type that in Google, you you will um, you'll you'll find some older versions in a PDF that you can download, and there's been some uh, new information in the more recent versions. But if you uh, um, 
You can also go to uh, the, the Project Management Institute and buy, buy a new version or, or get your boss, uh, your company to buy a version if you, if you want that. Okay, so successful project. We're going to camp out on these. The, the, this is what a project manager aspires to get out of the project. It's got to meet the, the defined scope. It needs to be quality, quality solutions and deliverables. It needs to be on the schedule that's uh, uh, predetermined and it needs to be within, uh, within budget. Uh, so that success, here's a, here's a little wisdom for success. There are two rules for success. Never reveal everything you know. And that's all I'm going to tell you on that. So a little humor. Hey, you try to make this stuff funny. It's hard, daggone, and at least I'm trying. But th this illustration really says a lot about scope, time, budget, and quality, all right? You go into a project, and the user or the client wants a car. Then they give you the money to uh, build a motorcycle and they only give you enough time to build a bicycle. And then your technician is overzealous and wants to do great, wonderful things and you applaud that, but they, they do documents that are gonna build the space shuttle. And at the end, you get a wheelbarrow. It's a little humorous, but a little funny to me because this all speaks to project management and the project management triangle. Sometimes you may hear this as triple constraints. Sometimes it's called the iron triangle, but a project can be represented or illustrated by the uh, uh, triple constraints. You have the time, which is the schedule uh, that you're given. You have cost and this cost can also represent um, human resources, how much money you have uh, to, to hire help to bring in a team or how much money you have to spend on buying materials. If you're building a house, you got, you've got a cost that you have to meet. And, and this cost would also include uh, your profit and your operating expenses. And then you have a scope and scope is just simply what the, the owner wants. And you really got to work hard to define a good scope so that you're on the same page. And if you put those three things together, the inside of the triangle represents quality. So let me, let me walk you through a scenario here. Let's say you've worked real hard and you know what the scope is. The scope is to build a, a, a two story house and the quoted price uh, cost on that two story house is, is uh, $200,000. That's probably a little low now, now because lumber costs are so high and things, but let's just go with $200,000. And then the time the owner wants you to build that house, let's say uh, four months. Well, as you go along, let's use the, the lumber price uh, that I just alluded to. So you quoted a, a price of $200,000 and it was based on uh, getting some materials from the lumber mill, but all of a sudden that lumber mill price goes up. Well, so you, you go back to the owner and say, hey, I know I quoted 200, but lumber prices have gone up. You're smart and you put a, in the contract that if any significant material prices go up, you will bring it back and adjust the price. Uh, make sure you put that in your contracts. Uh, con writing contracts is a, is a different lesson, <laughs> but put that stuff in your contracts. So wood prices go up. So now you, you need you 220,000. Um, that cost going up, if, if the owner didn't, didn't allow that, then you may have to change the scope. You may have to take some things out to cover uh, the, the cost of additional materials. Um, if, you're, if you're doing, let's say that, that you're creating plans for that house. So you're, you're the architect and you're creating plans. So the scope is 
to uh, create architectural plans for a two-story house and they're going to give you uh, uh, forty thousand dollars to put that together and then they they want um, uh, want it done in two months well let's say you're working and all of a sudden they come and they say well you know we not only want a two-story house but we also want a garage on the side and we thought you knew that we we, we knew that they just change the scope on you. So, so now if they change the scope on you, they need to increase what they pay and increase the time that they give you. See, well, each of these three things in a project are, are interlinked. And if one changes, the other two ideally change, or at least one of the other two ideally change. So a good lesson is this, um, if, if an owner comes to you and says they want something good, fast and cheap, you may want to pass on that project. <laughs> uh, if they say they want something fast and good and they don't care what it costs or they're willing to pay a, a, a high dollar, you may want to take that one because you, the owner gets to pick two things. If they want it um, cheap and they want it good, then it's not going to be very fast, you see. So uh, remember, good, fast, and cheap, you pick two. And then the other one flexes um, to, to cover and make the project work. So let's go to a question real quick. How many active projects can a project manager have in their portfolio? Now, portfolio is just simply how many projects you have. It's, it's the grouping of projects. So how many active projects can a PM have in their portfolio and still deliver it successfully, scope, quality, time, and budget? So most folks are saying zero to five. You got some five to 10, about 65% of you all have voted. Some, some jumped seconds. up. Couple more seconds. Couple more seconds. Okay. So it looks like most have said a real low number and, and that intuitively is correct. Uh, but this is a little bit of a trick question and you all should fuss at me because the, the real answer is not on here. The real answer is it depends. <laughs> it depends. What does it depend upon? Well, how big the project is. Um, if, if you're familiar with the Ohio River Bridge project uh, that was in uh, Louisville and the Abraham Lincoln Bridge that was built, on the design side of that project, that, that was just one project. It actually had a project manager from the highway department, but he had multiple uh, deputy project managers because it was so big. So that one project took multiple project managers. So if it's, if it's big enough, you, you, you may have um, eight project managers for one project going the other way. And again, I give lots of highway examples. I hope that's okay. Going the other way. If, if you're doing county bridges, which are, you know, smaller, smaller span, let's say a hundred feet or, or, or something like that, then you could probably do multiple of those. You can manage multiple of those at one time. So you may be able to get up into uh, uh, 10, uh, maybe 12. The key is you got to have really good project teams under you that you can trust with a lot of the work and push the work. And then you drop back and, and, and manage the scope time budget and the resources that come in to make this happen. Um, interesting though, what studies are finding is that it, the, the, the more we try, we humans try to multitask, 
the, the lower our efficiency is and the lower our quality is. So even though the Ohio River Bridge project is as huge, if, if you had uh, to choose between running 15 small bridges or one Ohio River Bridge, the Ohio River Bridge may be better to take that job because doing 15 at one time is setting you up for failure. Uh, uh, unless you just never sleep and you're constantly uh, working, when you jump from project one to project two, and then likewise from project two to project three, and, and you're managing all these, you, you lose a little bit of efficiency. Every time you pick something back up, you have to refresh yourself, remember what was, was going on. Now, if you have a, a photographic memory and, and can instantly remember things, you're going to be a great project manager. But speaking of myself, when I go back to a project that I haven't touched in a while, I have to bring myself back up to speed. Then I have to learn and look at what's happened in the time that I've not touched it. And so you're, you're, you're retreading just a little bit. So you're, you're all intuition that the lower number of projects, it, that's correct. In order to deliver successful scope time budget, you, you have to have a lower number of projects. Once you get up into um, the, the 10 to 20, then you have to start thinking of it like a program. We talked about program management er, early, uh, earlier. And a program manager actually goes and grabs project managers to run the project details and then oversees under the whole umbrella the program. So good job on that, everybody. So let's go to question six. What is project management? Let's launch that poll. Okay. Is project management going off the rails on a crazy train? Uh, is it the discipline of organizing and managing resources in such a way that the resources deliver all, all the work required to complete the project scope, time, and budget? Is it observing random activi uh, activities that are haphazardly put together with little aim or objective, or is it a troop of circus performers standing in a circle, juggling three balls and swapping them out? And of course, we're going, uh, we got one person voting for the circus. I bet you anything, the one person that voted for a circus is an experienced project manager because there is a, there is a lot of parallel between a circus performer. But of course the answer, go ahead and close that, Nicole, if you don't care. The answer from PMBOK is, is organizing and managing resources so that you deliver work on time, on budget, at, at, with the defined scope. That's, that's what project management is. Organizing and managing resources. It's moving pieces around and making them fit. I think project management's fun because it's so challenging. And I also think project management is fun because even though the skill sets are similar that you use, no two projects are ever alike. No, they're never alike and you constantly have to be, and that's, that's fun to me, you know, uh, but let me, let me give you a kind of a humorous definition of project management. Um, this is humorous, but this is so truthful. Project management is the art and the science of doing something that's never been done, done before by predicting the unknown, developing a plan to deal with the unknown, and then implementing tasks through people who don't report to you, reason source, resources that are limited and over which you have no control. That is every project that I have ever done. <laughs> Uh, especially the part about getting the work done uh, via people that don't re report to you. That, that is always a, a big challenge. But let's, let's start to visualize and break down some of project management. And I think by breaking it down, we, we start to understand project management a little better. So the five processes you see on your screen here are the five processes of project management. You've got initiation, that's the start. 
you've got planning and design now press press pause um, in the highway business there is a division of planning and there is a division of highway design that's not what we're talking about here we're talking about planning and design of the project workers or the project management now back to this you've got planning and design once you figure out a plan then you execute your plan and then as project manager we are constantly monitoring and controlling the work that's going to be done and if we find that something is off it's not on track we have to go back and make a plan for that and then put it back in place if we're doing monitoring and controlling and we realize everything's on track well then we just can't continue to execute the plan and then as it wraps up you close it out so let's let's go through some specifics to help us understand this first we're going to talk about the processes and this is resource management uh, what we mean by resource management is human resource this is the workers so you start the project initiation as the pm you start to think how are we going to get this work done Who's going to do it? Who's got the skill set that we need to do this work? So that's planning your, your project management. Then you start to execute your plan and that's the work getting done. The, the human resources have come on board and they've started to work. And as a project manager, we're constantly monitoring the work done and making sure uh, that the quality is there. If the quality is not there, if we're not where we need to be, we go back up and say, we got an issue here. How are we going to address this issue? How's the work going to get done? And then you go back to work being done. Let's do one more. This is the five processes and thinking about it through a time management lens. So you start the project and then you say, what will the work schedule be? In other words, how long is it going to take us to do all these different steps in the work? And you make a plan for that. Then you start to execute it. And that's the work being done on schedule. If you're building a house, you have to have uh, the carpenters to come in to put up the wood walls before you have the bricklayers come in to put the brick. So you will schedule the bricklayers, in other words. Then monitoring and control. Um, it's the quality control of the work schedule. Where are we supposed to be? And if we're off, how do we get back on track? And that's represented by this. Um, I see somebody saying that it would be uh, useful to have these slides at the end of the webinar. We'll definitely send those out. So the, the process that we're talking about that we as project managers do is you look at the project today and you say, where are we? You're, you're measuring where you are. Then you say, well, where did we plan to be? Now the, the optimum word there is plan. You should uh, begin up front with the end in mind, begin with the end in mind and make a plan for how things are supposed to work out. So now you say, where are we? And then you evaluate it to where we plan to be and then if we're off, how do we get back on track again? And you make a correction. And then you're back to again, measuring where are we? And over and over and over, all the way through the project timeline. So here is an illustration that, that really uh, focuses on change and the impact of change, all right? So the bottom axis here is project time as time goes on it could be measured in days it could be measured in weeks it could be measured in months it depends on how long uh, your project schedule is going to be and on the y-axis here this is just given for degree and you'll understand this a little bit more but down low is a lower degree up high is higher degree and these explain the interior lines on this graph the first line here at the bottom, uh, starting out at the bottom, is cost of change. So you see at the beginning of a project, the cost of change is very, very low. But as the time goes on and the project starts to mature, now cost of change is getting really, really big. 
if if down here you decide you're building a house and you decide you want to uh, uh, have a door that enters the house somewhere where the architect doesn't have it, that cost of change is, is lower here. If you get all the way towards the end, now putting that door is going to be a lot more costly. costly. That's the reason that we need to plan so much at the beginning uh, and work to plan as much as we can because the cost of change is lower at the beginning. Now, this line is really high at the beginning, a high degree of stakeholder influence. Now, stakeholder influence can mean a lot of different things, but just for now, the simple uh, definition of a stakeholder is somebody who has a stake in it, right? That, that's uh, probably not supposed to define a word by using the same word, but it's someone who, who, ha who has ties to the project. It could be the owner, or it could be uh, the, the neighborhood association that you're building in. Um, but there's lots of different stakeholders. And up, up front, that's when you want their influence. So you may have a stakeholder meeting as a part of your planning to understand them. And so you dial up their influence at the beginning. And work, as a manager, you got to work hard to get their influence at the beginning. As it goes on, you actually have to dial them out. If they start to come in at the end here and make demands, the cost of change is really high. So you have to dial them out at the end. Um, same thing with risk and uncertainty. Risk and uncertainty are very similar. Risk and uncertainty is very high at the beginning and then it goes down. Here's another way to visualize uh, the project management processes. The x-axis is again time and now the y-axis is monitoring cost and staffing level or you can think about this as uh, production hours, work hours, how many people you have working and how, like if you have three people working a full day, that's 24 hours, three times eight, 24 hours, or you may have 10 people working in a day, that's 80 hours. So the hours goes up and the staffing level goes up. So at the very beginning in the project initiation, really it's probably you as the project manager, um, a few others that are giving you advice, but you're coming to the point where you're going to have a, a good defined project. Um, one of the outputs would be a project charter. In the highway business, that's the highway plan or a planning study so that you can start to really understand the scope better. Now, in this next section in planning and design, that's trying to figure out who all needs to come work on this. So now notice the hours are going up. And at the end, you may have a project management plan. You've got your staffing. You've got your production hours. You've also got a critical path uh, Gantt chart at this point to make sure you understand the schedule. Now in execution, your, uh, your hours and costs go way up. This is when the most people are working on the project at once. And as, as the PM, you sit back and monitor it and control the work and work in between the different people to make sure they're communicating. Then you deliver whatever the, the, the work product is that you're trying to do. Um, in, in the design world, this would be the letting and you have construction documents. And then you close it out and, and archive it. So I can't reinforce this enough. Everything that you see, if you look at uh, the, the number one reasons projects fail, it's because they didn't plan enough. Plan, plan, plan. Think about it, schedule it. You know, it's, it, it's not going to follow your schedule perfectly, and that's okay. I always like to tell the project managers who work for me, over prepare and then go with the flow. Because as you prepare, then you can anticipate the needs and you can move things in and out. You can dial up um, 
uh, hours from a particular work group. If they're behind, you can dial dial back. You can you can orchestrate everything. And and really, uh, one of the great metaphors of project management is is a orchestra conductor. Uh, you're the one with the baton leading the different folks to make music. Um, let's get to a question. So what is a project manager? Question number seven, let's launch that. Okay, is it a person that thinks nine women can deliver a baby in one month? Is it an organizational leader in charge of creating order from chaos, even if chaos is perfectly satisfied with the status quo? Is it a professional cat herder or is it an individual with authority and responsibility for delivering the documented scope and quality within the predicted time and budget. Uh, somebody immediately voted for the, uh, uh, the, the nine women can deliver a baby in one month. Hey, I've worked for some project managers like that. All you have to do is throw additional resources on it, right? And then it, then it just uh, uh, happens faster. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. In pregnancy, it most definitely does not. Um, but yes, it is an individual with authority and responsibility. So that's gonna be the next slides. So let's look at the slides. There are some challenges. Project managers, you cannot be an expert in every area. That's the reason you've got to have a really good team of people that you trust and can advise you on those areas that you're not an expert in. In fact, I would go so far as to say, if you are in an, an expert in a particular subject matter, you need to back away from that subject matter and, and let, the, let the people that are on your team handle that. If you come in and try to direct them, then they'll back away and won't be as productive. I'll give you an example. I'm a highway designer. When I jumped up to project management, it is just human nature for me to be more interested in the highway design than the other phases. I had no problem going to uh, my structure designer and saying, hey, what's going on with the bridge design? Because I don't know how to design a bridge. But my highway designer, I, I, it was, it, it's tempting to get in and start talking to them and making decisions for them when you really need to back away and let them take ownership of that and you be owner of the big project. So um, you're not going to be an expert in every area. Go get experts that can help you. Uh, at times, the folks working for you, uh, you they, they may be working on your project, but may not be under your uh, management. They may uh, answer to someone else. That's always a challenge. Uh, and resources, human resources are uh, limited. So that goes to planning. You've really got to plan. For example, I've mentioned a bridge designer. I, I need to talk to my bridge designer and say, okay, here's the schedule. And it looks like we're going to bring you in next March. And we're sitting here in July and the guy's going, wow, you're already telling me that I'm going to be doing the design next March. I'm like, well, just... Make sure you hold that time for me. That's going to be when we need you is next March. So uh, if you're competing for resources, do your best to plan and get on their schedule. They will appreciate you and they'll take care of you. So now I'm getting into the role of project manager and I'm going to go through these more quickly because we're getting ready to wrap up here. So you've got a leader, a team builder, decision maker, communicator, and mentor. If you look at all five of those, definitely four of them strongly tie to um, connection with people, your, your personal relationships, uh, your, your work relationships with people. Um, leader, team builder, communicator, and mentor, that all has to do with human relationships. And even decision maker uh, is, is tied to human relationships as well. So as a PM, you need to be a leader. You need to, to, to be, uh, ha have the authority over the project. Now the owner of the project is the real boss and anything they says, it's a go. But that owner is paying you 
to make decisions and deliver uh, on time within budget and to scope. So you got to you got to uh, control as much as you can. Um, and the PM is the face of the project, both internally the project team and externally to the to, to the client. Um, if if you can't accept ownership and and take a, a role as a leader, I would I would highly advise that project management probably isn't for you. Um, project management is is leadership intensive, and um, if you don't like doing that, there's no shame in it. Stay in your subject matter and become a really excellent subject matter expert because we need subject there's more subject matter experts than there are pro project managers um, but even though it's leadership intensive that doesn't mean that you have to 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 push uh, I, I recommend that you lead and you and you pull people towards you uh, be flexible listen to them empower them help them make decisions if if they need to be put in line you have to put them in line but it's much easier to lead and have them follow than it is get behind them and push them. Uh, so it is really leadership intensive. Um, the better team you build as a project manager, the higher quality you're going to have. So you need to plan, plan, plan up front, put together a work breakdown structure or work breakdown structure, simply list the tasks that need to be done and then build your team to meet those tasks. And you may have to get creative and find resources that, that aren't obviously uh, there for you. Uh, um, the resources you need may not exist in your existing organization or they, um, they may be uh, booked up and you may have to go find someone else. So uh, building the team is just crucial. Um, the project team is switches just for a second to understand project team. The project team is going to support the project manager. It's going to complete the work task or guide you with their decisions. Um, they're going to help the project manager resolve issues. Um, uh, current secretary Jim Gray did a lot of project management when he was at Gray Construction. He says the number, the number one, um, uh, number one item on his list for project management was con conflict uh, uh, resolution. And he was talking about in between the people working on the team, which I thought was very interesting. Um, but these folks on the team, they're the ones that are really producing the work, work product that, that you're overseeing and you're involved in, but they're creating it. So, as a, as a team builder, you got to be a motivator, you got to coach, you got to cheerlead, you got to make, make peace. And like I already said, you got to resolve uh, conflict. And I think from the very beginning, understanding uh, the team roles and their responsibility is very key. Uh, and you need to walk through that with them right at the very beginning at the project charter when you're coming up with what you all are going to do. But you definitely don't want members of your team to think, boy, I sure am glad the holes at their end. Um, they may have gotten their part done. Uh, but if somebody else on the team had to change what they did because the, the, the first group uh, made some switches, hey, you're all going down. Because if, if, if you don't deliver on time within budget, with quality and at the scope, then then your team didn't didn't win and you won't be getting any more work. So just be cognizant that your emotions and how you treat things, um, both negative and positive, they will be reflected in your team. So um, be wary of that and and be the be a member of the project team yourself and be the team member that you want them to be. Um, having conflict is just just part of 
this whole process. And it's, it's also a natural development of the group. You should actually encourage it in certain instances, but professionally um, and, and resolve the conflict, um, mediate it and, and uh, work through it. But one thing that you need to be concerned about as a PM is, is don't be drugged down into the details. You've got to stay up higher and get your subject matter expert um, uh, to be in the details. Now, if that subject matter expert is having, having problems, um, if you have expertise, you may go in and coach them, but coach them and have them do, do the work or pair them up with somebody so they can get the work done. The PM needs to be a decision maker. You're getting input from all the people on your team and you're making the decision and keeping it moving and you can't have analysis paralysis. But as you are uh, making those decisions and you're getting feedback from your subject matter expert, ask lots of what if questions. Um, now, sometimes people get angry at that. The subject matter expert, they, they feel like they're uh, being treated like they didn't look at everything. I try to say, hey, I, I'm trying to understand. And yes, I am going to challenge you. Um, it's not that I don't think that you can do it. It's that I need to understand it so that we can, we can work uh, uh, together to push this on through. So hopefully you got a good rapport with your subject matter experts and you can question them and, and uh, collaborate with them. Um, decision maker has limits on the project manager. The owner is the ultimate decision maker. So if they say paint it green, you're gonna paint it green, even though they might've said blue to begin with. Um, so, but you got to know your stakeholders and you got to try to understand where they're coming from, what their agendas are, and try to meet that uh, in the project. The more you can uh, do that, the better you'll be able to see the larger questions and you need to be wise in what you do. The larger questions or the, or the politically sensitive decisions, you may need to take that to the client. Um, I can tell you this, if you do that on every single question that comes up, the client's going to be thinking, what am I paying you for? So there is this balance of kind of knowing uh, when to answer the question yourself, when to make the decision yourself, and when to elevate it to uh, the client. So you've got to get good at that. And all of this doesn't happen without communication. You gotta, you gotta communicate a schedule. You gotta uh, communicate the issues and how they're resolved. You gotta collaborate with all the stakeholders. Work to create opportunities for dialogue. When you get into dialogue, that's when issues really get resolved in a very productive uh, uh, fashion. And don't forget to be working with people that you see have project management potential. Um, share your experiences, giving feedback to them, and raise them up as PEMs. Um, but probably the biggest role of the project manager from my perspective is, is a, a superman, superwoman. Um, uh, project management isn't for cowards. It, it is very challenging. At the end of the day, I think it is fabulously fun. And we know project managers are extremely, extremely important. I hope I've given you some things to think about. We're moving into questions and comments. I will send a PDF to, to Nicole once we wrap up. Uh, I'll send her a PDF of these slides and she can email them to you. But uh, I am out of time, uh, but am willing to stay on and ask questions or give comments of anything that you might have. So what questions would you have of me at this point? Yes, if you have any questions, you can take yourself off mute or you can put that question in the chat box and he can see it or I can read it to him. Anything? I don't see any questions in the chat. So you see anything in your chat, Jeff? Okay. Nope, I think, I think I've either... Uh, uh, 
covered it so well that everything's co uh, covered, which I don't believe, or, or, or they realize that 10 o'clock is approaching quickly and they've got to get back a lot of bamboo type supports. Um, if there's an option, that's different. And, uh, but again, if they're saying e anything illegal and unethical or immoral, that's different. If it is an amoral decision and an amoral decision is not right or wrong, an amoral decision is left or right. If you think you need to go to the right, but your client thinks you need to go to the left, then my suggestion is you say, hey, can I, can I tell you why I think going this way is better? I just want to tell you, I'm giving you my opinion and I'm going to follow your instruction because at the end of the day, you pay, you pay me, all right? Well, here's why I think we ought to do that. N number one, number two, number three. And so I thank you for your time. Now, if your client then says, hey, I appreciate that, but I really want you to go left. You go left and you make it the best you can. I hope that answered your question. If it did, you can give me a thumbs up. It is very difficult. So, some clients want to be the project managers themselves and that that's, that's difficult. In those cases, remember when I said you needed to be wise when you take questions to the client, if the client is very, very involved, then you may want to go to them more often uh, than you would normally. So good question.